I think within this context of this game, a new Jerusalem would be a, a sort of a utopia city that, we're, that we strive to have peace in. And um, what would that look like for you? Hmm, that's a really interesting. Uh, that's a really interesting question. What would a utopian city or state look like? Well, I really, really love the countryside. But as people will know, I also really, really like technology. And I think often you have a situation where technology has ended up damaging nature. So the natural world we live in, which is just so beautiful and is so um, such a defining characteristic of England has been damaged repeatedly by advancing technology. And I think that's a I think that's a bad thing. I think it's sad. Mm. And and I would love to see a technological wonderland that was um just a merging of technology with the natural world. So I would like you know, a, a low, low population, really. That's the first thing. You don't want to be densely packed in. You want to you want to have plenty of space. And you want to be surrounded by, you know, forests, trees, waterfalls, rivers. So you want to be surrounded by the natural beauty of the land. And it would be nice if somehow you could have a hyper-technological society that lived in absolute harmony with mm. nature so you know like the traditional english village that sort of snuggled away in in a beautiful little part of the countryside it would almost be like a technological technologically advanced version of that village and and the best way to sort of describe this is i once saw a documentary about um, it, it was a series of shows actually and i'm calling it documentaries a bit over the top they weren't really documentaries but there were a series of shows about these wonderful houses that sort of that, that architects had uh, the architects had made which were sort of award-winning or something particularly you know special and this one architect had built a house that m sort of glass steel and wood that more or less merged into a forest. So it was surrounded completely by the forest. So when you went out of your door, it was all trees, it was all beautiful. You were nestled right in there in nature. And the house itself, because of the way it was constructed with wood, uh, with natural materials growing on certain parts of it, you know, lots of glass, lots of steel, it, it kind of merged in with the forest, almost like the house was camouflaged into the forest. So you were really connected with nature, but inside the house, it was like this technological wonderland. It was mm. like absolutely incredible. And I remember watching that thinking, that would probably be my perfect house. So you walk out of your front door and you're running through the most beautiful English countryside. But at the same time, when you get back, you're not in some cabin where you know you're living by candlelight you're in this technological wonderland that, that that is in total harmony with the natural world that surrounds it and and that really took me back and it made me think to myself you know what this would be an absolutely fantastic fantastic um way to live so you were sort of merging because i because i think europeans have a really distinct sort of connection with technology because we're an inventive race i think you can sum yeah. up europeans because we're inventors we're explorers we're creators we're industrialists but mm -hmm. sometimes our sort of pioneering industrialized nature does you know, fly in the face of the countryside and it harms it. And, you know, I, I live in the north now, I live near Leeds. And I remember once I, I, I looked into the history of uh, Leeds Canal and the canals going through Leeds at one point were so polluted. Nearly all of the marine life in the canalways around Leeds was killed off. And that, that's a tragic situation to be in when you're damaging your natural environment. And what I would like to see is our technology and our creative nature and our sort of you know industrious spirit be used in a way that worked in harmony with nature to produce this technological wonderland where human beings lived in absolute balance with the natural world 
and I think that would be really, really good. Um, and I, I definitely, uh, I definitely think um, that would be something special. I think that would be the sort of thing that uh, that we we as a people could achieve and it would be as i say low population density because i think it's bad for people to live in high population density so areas. How, how would you control then um low population would you just say that they i mean would, would you just have a you people have to apply for a license to have children or i mean no no i i don't look the vast majority of population growth in the west is driven completely by mass immigration mm, it's true. not driven by white people having lots of children white people generally don't have lots of children we have around replacement rate uh birth rate maybe just under so if anything a, a perfect society would give incentives to white people to have slightly more children and when i say slightly more children i mean replacement rate i don't think white people should be sort of coerced into having five or six children just to compete with immigrants we shouldn't <clears throat> we should never be placed in a situation within our own nations where we have to compete uh, with migrants but having a having a low population density high iq high trust society of our own people living in a very natural green pleasant land where we also have the benefits of you know technology would, would be fantastic I'm just going to work this out for you, actually. Um, so sorry about the tapping on the keyboard. Um, so if you look at the UK population in 1970, it was mm -hmm. around 55 million people. OK, now by but now, sort of 50 years later, you've got 70 million. So we've seen a population increase of 15 million people. So that's like 30% of the population. You know, we've had a 30% population increase over the last 50 years. Now, yeah. that's incredible. It is. It's staggering. I mean, even if you go back 200 years, you're probably looking at half of the world population today, aren't you? Or maybe well, less than okay, that. UK, UK population, um, 1800. UK population in 1800 was 10.5 million. Wow. So, you know, just over 200 years ago, you know, we've increased our population sort of sevenfold in 200 years. It's, it's staggering. And what I'm saying is we don't need to have a giant and ever growing population. That's sort of this globalist lie that, you know, we need huge amounts of people. We need to keep we need to we need to keep people coming in. Uh, we need to, you know, we need to get as many people possible just pouring in to the UK. We don't. And I think a, a lot of what's said is, um, I think a lot of what's said uh, is said because what they want is an ever-growing population. So GDP keeps rising. It's everything's built on this belief that everything and will be good, everything you, will be fine. Do you think the necessity for them wanting GDP to continue to rise is to perpetuate? their control through their monetary system then that's the reason for I think for growth i think part of it i think part of it is everything that we do now our economic systems are not based on people being happy they're not based on people uh, being healthy they're based on the idea that you need constant perpetual economic growth mm. constant and that that is the best economic system. But that is something that's largely unsustainable, unless, however, you just keep growing the population. People often ask, what, what sort of the meaning, what sort of the meaning of life? And yeah. I would say that the meaning of life is fundamentally life itself. So the meaning of life is life. Because every life form on the planet strives for two things, to survive for as long as possible and to procreate as many times as possible. So life sort of exists to extend and replicate itself. So the conditions that we live in should be conducive to that. The conditions that white people live in should follow that meaning of life 
-hmm. And that means that the, the conditions we live in should be conducive to a healthy, long and fulfilling existence where we have the financial stability and room to raise children, to pass on our genes and to create, you know, to create more of, of us in our own image.